So now that we've talked about all the nasty things that can happen to your computer, let's talk about how to defend the computer against these nasty little buggers. And the two ways that we can protect the computer from a consumer point of view is via UPS and a surge suppressor. So UPS. UPS is not the brown truck with the guy with the brown short sleeve shirt and fashionable brown shorts. This stands for uninterruptible power supply. What we're looking at here is a battery backup. It's designed so that when the power goes out, your computer will stay on long enough for you to save your work, to shut down, and to walk away. <laughs> it basically allows you time to shut everything down, save it, and turn your computer off properly. So it's a battery backup. Now, the UPS is designed, again, to keep your computer on long enough so you can back things up and shut it down. Do not plug anything into that UPS that would drain the battery severely. So, for example, if you happen to have a laser printer at home, don't plug the laser printer into the UPS. In fact, I would recommend not really plugging any printer into the UPS portion of a UPS. There's, on UPSs, there's things that you can plug in for battery backup, and then there's things that are just surge suppressors, and we'll talk about surge suppressors in a second. You don't want to plug anything into the battery backup that you really don't need to have on if the power goes out. You Again, you're just trying to save your work and exit. And there are two basic types of UPSs. There is what we call the standby power systems, and then there's the online UPS. And the big difference is price. <laughs> well, there's another difference. The standby power systems are supposed to detect the power sack. They are supposed to be kind of off to the side. And when they detect that there is a power event, when there's a blackout or brownout, they're supposed to kick on super fast so you can then use the battery to shut things down. Now, depending on how fast these are, you may or may not lose your work. Then there's the other one, which is the more expensive one and the preferred method, which is the online UPS. Now, the online UPS is kind of like how your laptop works. Now, think about this for a second. You have your laptop and you plug it into the wall through a power cord, right? If you unplug the adapter, if you unplug the power cord that goes into your laptop, there's no change because your laptop isn't pulling power from the wall. Your laptop is actually pulling power from the battery. Your battery is pulling power from the wall. So it's constantly um, recharging the charge. So when you unplug it, there's absolutely no drop in power because it wasn't getting the power from the wall to begin with. That's what an online UPS is. You are using the battery while the battery is using the wall. And so if there's a power outage, no big deal. There's no drop because you were never using it. Again, it costs more, but you are also assured that you're not going to lose any work because it doesn't really make a difference. So, by the way, um, another little interesting tidbit for you. If your laptop keeps shutting down or you have problems with your laptop, try taking the battery out and plugging it directly into the wall. If it works fine, then you have a bad battery. Totally FYI there. Anyhow, the next one is a surge suppressor. The surge suppressor is kind of the heart of protection. And you also run into surge suppressors built into UPSs now. The surge suppressor is there to absorb the power spike. It's there to absorb the power surge. That's why it's called a surge suppressor. So if it picks up the whoosh power spike, it blocks it. There's a little thing inside the surge suppressor that takes the hit so your computer doesn't get whacked. Now, depending on how much the surge suppressor costs, you might be able to take more than one hit. In general, if you live in an area where you get a lot of electrical events, so for example, again, Houston, lots of storms, you want to change your surge suppressor every six months to a year, depending on what they suggest on the box, because you do get a lot of lightning out here. Some other things you need to be aware of, for example, if you do happen to have a modem on your computer, you want to plug your RJ11 into the surge suppressor, and the RJ11 is basically your telephone cable, your telephone cord. And energy absorption is rated in joules. So, for example, 600 should be your minimum. If you look online, for example, Newegg or Best Buy, you can find surge suppressors. They are incredibly cheap compared to what they used to be. And you get a lot of protection on your device. So there's really no excuse to be running a computer without having it through a surge suppressor at the very minimum. Okay, the next video, we're going to talk about the robbers. We're going to talk about keeping your computer safe against good old-fashioned theft.